Hello everyone, my name is Enrico and in today's PowerPoint presentation we are going to talk about cell parts and their functions, part 2. We are going to start talking about the lysosome, then proceed with the peroxisome, vacuole, ribosome, cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix and cell walls. Lysosomes in the cell the lysosome has a diameter of 0.5 to 1.0 micrometers and its inner material is surrounded by a single membrane. It is also important to know that the main role they play in the cell is to store hydrolases. Lysosomes store these enzymes which are capable of digesting biological molecules like carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Even though they are used to digest food and break down damaged cellular constituents, they must be used very carefully because they might as well break down useful components of the cell and destroy the cell. There are approximately 40 enzymes inside the lysosome. These enzymes are synthesized on the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then they are transported to the Golgi apparatus where they are packaged into vesicles that later become lysosomes. If there is any de defects in any of the 40 enzymes, it will affect the rate of degradation of cellular processes and therefore cause serious risks to the health of the organism. The properties of the peroxisome. The size and the structure of the peroxisome are very similar to that of the lysosome. And just like the lysosome, they are surrounded by one single membrane. On the other hand, their peroxisome, differently from the lysosome, is not part of the endomembrane system. And these organelles are prominent in kidney and liver tissues because of the functions that they carry. The main function of the peroxisome is to generate and degrade hydrogen peroxide. In eukaryotic organisms, there are metabolisms that produce H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide, which is very harmful to the cell and to the organism. The enzyme catalase acts upon the molecule and turns it to oxygen and water. The peroxisome is different in animal and plant cells. In animal cells it plays many roles. The peroxisome detoxifies harmful compounds of the cell and catabolizes unusual substances. It is speculated that it might also regulate the levels of oxygen in the cell. The peroxisome is also important in the oxidative breakdown of fatty acids that you can find in triglycerols, phospholipids and glycolipids. The peroxisome in plant cells. One specialized peroxisome called glyoxisome plays key role in converting stored fat into carbohydrates. In photosynthetic tissue, on the other hand, leaf peroxisomes are prominent due to their role in photorespiration. The photorespiratory pathway involves several organelles. Enzymes needed are located in peroxisome, chloroplast and mitochondria, suggesting a close relationship between these organelles. The properties of the vacuole the vacuole is a membrane-bounded organelle. In animals and yeast, vacuoles are used as storage or as means of transport. While in protozoa, there are specialized vacuoles called phagosome that fuse with the lysosome. In this way, there are nutrients that are hydrolyzed by enzymes that feed the cell of protozoa. Vacuoles do play a very important role in plant cells as well. 
There is a single vacuole, but very large compared to other organelles. In plant cells, it occupies much of internal volume of the cell, and it is widely known as the central vacuole. The main function of the vacuole in plant cells is to maintain turgor pressure. Turgor pressure is what keeps the plant cell from wilting. There is a high concentration of solutes in the vacuole, which makes water try to get into the cell and make the cell swell. By sprinkling some salt into a crisp celery, we would have a higher concentration of solute in the outside, and therefore the water would try to leave the cell. Therefore, the cell would be more flaccid and the celery would lose its crisp. What are ribosomes? Ribosomes are sites where proteins are synthesized. They are far more numerous than most other intracellular structures. Prokaryotic cells usually contain thousands of ribosomes in their cytoplasm, and eukaryotic cells may have hundreds of thousands or even millions of them. Ribosomes are also found in both mitochondria and chloroplasts, where they function in organelle-specific protein synthesis. These ribosomes that are located in mitochondria and chloroplasts differ in size from ribosomes that are located in the cytoplasm. These ribosomes are more similar to those that can be found in bacteria or cyanobacteria. The main differences are in size, number, kinds of ribosomal proteins, and types of ribosomal RNA. If we look more closely, we can divide the ribosome into two subunits, called large subunit and small subunit which are 30 nanometer and 25 nanometer respectively. A better way to express the size is using sedimentation coefficient, which is expressed in Svedberg units. This measure is done by observing how rapidly the particles sediment when they are subjected to a centrifuge. The definition of a cytoskeleton would be an intricate, organized, three-dimensional array of interconnected proteinaceous structures. Cytoskeleton provides structure to the cytoplasm and gives the cell its distinctive shape. The fibers that compose the cytoskeleton form a highly organized matrix. In addition, the cytoskeleton plays an important role in cell movement and cell division. The three major structural elements of the cytoskeleton are microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. It has been estimated that as much as 20 to 40 percent of the water in the cytosol might be bound to the microfilaments and microtubules of the cytoskeleton. These parts of the cytoskeleton can be visualized by various types of specialized light microscopy. Extracellular matrix, or also abbreviated as ECM, is the extracellular structure that provides support to the cell of the animal organisms. It consists primarily of collagen fibrils and proteoglycans. Animal cells are not encased in rigid walls. Instead, they are surrounded by a strong, by elastic net, which allows them to be motile. For plant and fungal cells, the extracellular structure is the rigid cell wall, which consists mainly of cellulose microfibrils, embedded in a matrix of other polysaccharides and small amounts of protein. Plant cell walls actually consist of two layers. 
The primary cell wall consists mainly of cellulose fibrils embedded in a gel-like polysaccharide matrix. Primary walls are quite flexible and extensible, whilst allows them to expand. Thicker and more rigid secondary cell walls have a higher content of linen, or otherwise known as wood. The rigidity of the cell wall makes the plant cells non-motile. Plasmodesmata Plant cells are connected to neighboring cells through cytoplasmic bridges, known as plasmodesmata. These bridges pass solutes and water from one cell to the other. Cell walls in bacteria and archaea most bacteria and archaea are surrounded by an extracellular structure, also called a cell wall, which is made mainly of peptidoglycans. Archaeal cell walls vary considerably from species to species. Some are mainly proteinaceous, whereas others have peptidoglycan-like components. They can be either motile or non-motile, varying from their cell wall. Extracellular structures play a key role in motility and migration of the cell. Cell division, cell recognition and adhesion, and cell differentiation. What the picture are viruses? To your left. You can see Viruses how the virus are enters the host cell, parasitic there, particles it, that are incapable of free living of the cell. Then Viruses it cannot perform all of the functions required the for the independent existence, and the viruses are not alive. In order to be alive, an organism should be able to have a metabolism, it should respond to stimuli, and it should be able to reproduce. We can conclude that they are not alive, since they do not have a metabolism and they do not respond to stimuli. They also can reproduce only by invading a host cell. In the image to your right, you can see some of the most contagious RNA and DNA containing viruses. RNA containing viruses are polio, tobacco mosaic, and HIV, while DNA containing they are papilloma, herpes, simplex, and T4 bacteriophage. Viroids. Viroids are small circular RNA molecules and they are the smallest known infectious agents. They are responsible for disease of several crop plants, including potatoes and tobacco. They can enter the nucleus of an infected plant cell and interfere with the transcription of DNA into RNA in a process that is known as gene silencing. It is also reported that it can be transmitted in different ways, such as seeds, pollen, and agricultural implements used in cultivation and harvesting. One viroid with severe economic consequences is kadang kadang, which affects coconut palm. Prions. They represent another class of acellular infectious agents. Prion proteins are abnormally folded versions of normal cellular proteins. Both the normal and variant form of the prion protein are found on the surfaces of the neurons suggesting that the protein may somehow affect the receptors and detect nerve signals. Prions are responsible for neurological disease, such as scrapie in sheep and goats, kuru in humans, and medical disease in cattle, and all of these can lead to fatalities. Prions are not destroyed by cooking or boiling, so people should be careful in areas where prions are detected. Now, let's check our knowledge with some questions from the chapter. You will have 30 seconds to think and then answer. If you need more time, you can also pause the video. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum functions in the synthesis of A. DNA 
B. Lipids, polysaccharides, proteins and DNA. C. Lipids. D. Polysaccharides. Or E. Proteins. The answer to question 1 is C. Lipids. They are synthesized in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Question number 2. The major structural element of the cytoskeleton are Select 1. A. Microtubules, microfilaments and intermediate filaments. B. The extracellular matrix and the cell wall. C. Cleavage, furrows and G. Actin. D. Proteoglycans and cellulose microfibrils. Or E. The cytoplasm and cytosol. And the correct answer for this question is A. Microtubules, microfilaments and intermediate filaments. Question number 3. The cytosol that you will be able to see in the picture is best described as A. Internal contents of organelles B. Semifluid substance in which organelles are suspended C. Area of the cell not occupied by the nucleus D. Fluid with nucleus or E. Three-dimensional array of interconnected filaments and the correct answer for this question is B. Semifluid substance in which organelles are suspended. Prions are A. Infectious circular RNA molecules that replicate in host cells. B. Simple viruses composed of protein. C. The site of protein synthesis in prokaryotic cells. D. Infectious misfolded proteins that cause normal protein molecules to misfold. E. Primitive protein particles that are believed to be an ancient precursor of living cells. And the correct answer for question number 4 is D. Infectious misfolded proteins that cause normal protein molecules to misfold. Question number 5. Intermediate filaments are best described as a. Different in different cell types b. Composed of globular proteins only c. Smaller than actin filaments d. Composed of tubulin or e. None of these are correct. And the right answer for question number 5 is a. They are different in different cell types. Question number 6. Communication between animal cells is facilitated by A. Tight junctions B. Gap and adhesive junctions C. Adhesive junctions D. Plasmodesmata or E. Gap junctions And the right answer to question number 6 is E. Gap junctions you can see the gap junctions in the picture to your right.